Hi everyone, my name is Sarah and today we're going to be talking about Bracebridge Public Library's local history collection. So as I said, my name is Sarah and today we're looking at the Bracebridge Public Library's local history collection or the Muskoka collection. The Muskoka collection is made up of books, vertical files, archival foam, microfilm, um, we have microfiche, we have reference materials, and we also have photographs, postcards, and even some board games. So there's lots of different materials that are available at the library. If you're accessing the collection online, you can access a couple different parts of it. So you can get our digitized newspapers, and you can also get the digitized photos and postcards that we have available. We haven't digitized all of our newspapers and we haven't digitized all of our photographs and postcards, but we'll be looking at the ones that are available today and how to access them. Okay, so let's look at the newspapers that the library has digitized. So the first thing we want to do is go to the Bracebridge Public Library website. So you can find that at bracebridgelibrary.ca. And then we want to go to Library Services and down to Local History and Genealogy. Now we're hoping to be updating this page soon, so it might look a little bit different um, if you're visiting later on, but for now, we're going to go to the very bottom of the page. So at the bottom of the page, you can see helpful websites for local history and genealogy. And we want to go to the Canadian Community Digital Archives. So once the page is loaded, you should get to this screen. And depending on what your research question is, you might be using the search, browse, papers, clippings, or photographs options from this first screen. For now, let's look at search. So search is a really great tool if you are looking for a place, a person, a business, an event. The nice thing about digital archives and digitized newspapers is it's a lot easier to find exactly what you're looking for and it's much easier to use than a microfilm if you're searching for something or someone. So let's go ahead and look for library and then what we want to do if we're looking for Bracebridge or Muskoka we want to narrow our newspaper And so you can see the Bracebridge Gazette is here. The Herald Gazette and the Muskoka Herald are also on here. Let's look at the Muskoka Herald. So if you scroll down, you can see any instance that the word library pops up in the Muskoka Herald. Let's go ahead and look at this from May the 5th. Now, one thing with the search feature is that it does highlight whatever you have searched for. So since we've searched for library, we can see down here it's faint, but right in here it has highlighted library. So let's look at the browse feature. The browse feature is good if you don't know specifically what you're looking for. Maybe you're just interested in a certain time or you're interested in a certain community. Let's look and see, we have Ontario. Go to Bracebridge, four newspapers pop up. Let's look at the Muskoka Herald. And we can choose a year. So let's choose 1920. Let's look at April. 
And let's look at the 15th. So we can click on the paper to open it up. So we've navigated over to page two. You can see there's eight pages here and we can choose a different page from this drop down menu. We also have options across the top. We can use a search tool. We can save the page or if we're connected to a printer, we can print the page that we're on. My internet's a little bit slow, so it just popped up, but we can see we can quickly go from page one, two, three, all the way to page eight. So I want to look at one last part of the Canadian Community Digital Archives. So let's go to papers this time. So you can see all the papers that are available. And let's open up the Bracebridge Gazette. And let's choose April 21st. So along the right hand side of the screen, there are these options to zoom in and out or to adjust the brightness of the page. So let's go ahead and hit the zoom in button. So we can zoom in to read some of the smaller font a little bit better. And then to zoom back out, we just have this magnifying glass again. So if we click the brightness and contrast button, we'll get this menu that pops up. We should be able to change the brightness so it's darker or brighter. And we can change the contrast as well. Okay, so we are still on the local history and genealogy page underneath library services on the website. And we are going to go down to the bottom. And now we're going to look at Muskoka Digital Archives. So Muskoka Digital Archives is a collaborative project with the Bracebridge Public Library and the Huntsville Public Library. And you'll see um, as we go that there are some items from Bracebridge, Huntsville, and other places around Muskoka. Um, there are also some uh, with the Muskoka Perrystown Genealogy Group. So if you're looking for additional resources, um, especially for research assistance, they're a really good resource and group to go to. But let's look at what's new. Now you can search by other things if you're looking for something specific, if you're looking for a street or a person or an event, or even if you just want to put in Bracebridge or Huntsville. But for us, we're just going to see what's new and go from there. And let's look at this one here. So we'll look at the Drum Carry Cabins and Muskoka River. So let's click on that to open it up. And this one's kind of a fun postcard. So we can see down here on the left some information about it. So that it's a postcard, it has some blue paint on the front of it, and then the inscription on the back. It says, Dear Mary, the weather has been wonderful. I'm getting lots of sketching done and have and having a swell time. We'll be coming home on Sunday. Be seeing you, Vicky. And it is from 1942. It also tells you what the collection is, language, and other information. The Bracebridge Public Library doesn't find the copyright information for you. Um, we can't be responsible for it legally. Um, if you're using things for 
um, education or if you're using it for certain things, then you can access it and use it. But if you're using it for um, commercial purposes or in books, things like that, there are certain rules to follow. So that's just something to be aware of. When we click on the postcard, it opens it up and we can see it more closely. And there's some identifiable landmarks. So let's go back. One thing that is neat is you can create an electronic postcard. When you click on create an electronic postcard, you get this screen. You can enter someone's email address and your email address. And if you have a message, you can send it to them as well. And this lets you send them a postcard from Muskoka. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the mysteries. So on the mysteries page, we have buildings, people, and events that haven't been identified. Now there is room for comments on any of the photos. You'll see if they have a comment, um, there'll be a little red speech bubble beside them. Comments let you ask questions about the postcards or also help us identify them. If you have a story about a place in one of the postcards, it can also help us and help the digital archive really become something special. So let's go down and see uh, this one here. So off to war, 1914. So this picture is from the Huntsville Public Library. We can see the description here. And all we know about the photograph is it is from 1914. And the person in it is a friend of Claire Monkhouse. So if you had any more information about who the soldier is, anyone else in the photograph, or even the location of the photograph, you can go below the photo and see where it says comment on this item. You can click on that. And when you click on it, it asks you for a few things. It asks you for your name, your email address. It gives you a space for the comment. And then it has a couple more things. It asks you if it's okay, if your name is made public, you can answer yes or no. And if it's okay, if your comment is made public, which you can also answer yes or no. So if you say no to both of these, the library will get the information. So if they need to contact you, if you had a question, they can get back to you, but then no one else can see that. So let's look at one last thing with the Muskoka Digital Archives, and that's using the search tool. And let's just look up a library. So when we type in library, our search results are down on the left. On the right hand side, we have some filters that we can apply. So we can choose whether we want it from Muskoka Lakes Public Library, the Bracebridge Public Library, or the Huntsville Public Library. It also asks us whether we want an audio clip, an image, or some other different media types. Let's go ahead and choose one of these to look at. So it tells us the description. It also tells us a local identifier. So if you came into the Bracebridge Public Library wanting to look at the original, you could come and we could search under that local identifier. The other way that we can search is by an advanced search. Then you can choose whether you want it between a certain time period in a certain geographic location and what kind of media you're looking for. So whether you're looking for newspapers, images, audio, or more. 
Okay, so that's our video. Thank you so much for watching. Now, if you have any questions about accessing our online resources or the local history collection, then just ask us in the comments below. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, or you can email us. If you have any questions about the history of Bracebridge or Muskoka, then feel free to ask us and we'll do our best um, to help you with your question with resources that we have available right now. Next time we are going to be looking at some readers advisory tools. So if you are running out of books, if you don't know what to read next, we'll be looking at Novelist and we'll also be looking at some handy websites that we use to help find your next great read. Thanks!